The infrastructure of cannabis starts with genetics, the DNA of the plant, the origins of branding and cannabis. Cannabis genetics, in a sense, is a combination of biology and creativity. Biology being interpreted to the world via human creativity. As cannabis starts to be legalized throughout the United States and around the world, like all sectors of the cannabis industry, the cannabis breeders and genetics sector is entering a new era. An environment of legitimate business and therefore a whole new world to be pioneered. We've recently entered this modern era of the cannabis industry and there's one company that has innovated and shaped a new path for cannabis genetics. A culmination of hardships and perseverance. Compound Genetics has shown the industry the future of cannabis genetics and the business viability of this new model. But who is the founder of Compound Genetics? Meet Chris. Chris has been involved with cannabis for almost two decades and has found massive amounts of success after starting Compound Genetics in 2017. Compound Genetics now has official partnerships with Cookies Cannabis and Runts, two of the top cannabis brands in the world, while working with a number of other companies. But how did Chris and Compound Genetics get to these heights of success? Welcome to High Design. My name is LMC. In this episode, we will cover the history and business strategies of Chris and Compound Genetics. Smash the like button and strap in. This one is going to be dope. Chris and his family moved from California to Oregon when he was six years old. Throughout the years living in Portland, he drew closer and closer to cannabis. Initially, Chris was just on a general online forum where he met a friend who furthered his interest in cannabis. The friend he met in 2004 on those forums convinced him to come to Amsterdam. While Chris was in Amsterdam, he found out about IC Mag. So Chris headed into the vast array of infrastructure for studying cannabis genetics, and he also met breeders from all around the world. In 2005, while in Amsterdam, he was able to experience the IC Mag Cup. Chris gained worldly experience surrounding cannabis that has definitely impacted his understanding of the plant. Chris would stay in Amsterdam from 2004 to 2006, and then eventually would head back home to Portland. Once he was back, he started to shadow a mentor that helped him further extend his studies of cannabis cultivation. In 2007, he would move into one of the many grow houses that his mentor owned throughout Portland, where he ate, slept, and breathed cannabis cultivation, helping his mentor cultivate medical marijuana. Chris worked his way up the ladder in the medical cannabis collective he was working in, obsessed with expanding his knowledge of cannabis cultivation and the business behind the cultivation. Chris helped build a solid medical marijuana business. At the time, Chris started to work with strains like Headband, Sour Diesel, Dog Shit, and OG Kush. One day, Chris started to feel weird. His hands were starting to shake, and that started to develop into full-on tremors. Not understanding what was happening to his body, he went to the doctors to see what was happening. Doctors believed that a small cyst in his head was disrupting normal chemical reactions in his brain, so he was told he needed to get brain surgery to remove the cyst. So Chris started to work more in the background of the cannabis company he was now part owner of in preparation for his surgery. In 2014, the surgery went underway smoothly, and Chris recovered in as little as three to four weeks. Wanting to get straight back to his love and passion of growing cannabis and breeding new genetics. But a little after his recovery, his partner he was working with took all of their money, locked Chris out of all of the grows, and refused to talk to him. The old medical marijuana markets that were prior to recreational cannabis legalization were pretty unregulated. And many, including myself, called it the wild, wild west. I personally was in high school working in the Washington medical cannabis market as a junior. So yeah, the medical days were pretty wild, and for someone to pretty much steal everything wasn't the most uncommon thing, and unfortunately after an argument he had with his partner, Chris pretty much lost everything. 
And on top of that, even after his surgery, Chris continued to feel weird. And then the tremor started again, just like before the surgery. Chris would go back to the doctors and after seeing a number of different specialists to figure out what was going on, he finally got the right diagnosis, which was early onset Parkinson's disease. For people that don't know what Parkinson's is, it's a progressive disease of the central nervous system. The condition is caused by a loss of cells in the area of the brain that produces dopamine. It's usually diagnosed in people who are in their early 60s. People who are diagnosed before the age of 50 are said to have early onset Parkinson's. Chris started to have early onset Parkinson's in his late 30s. While the Parkinson's got progressively worse, Chris tried to persevere and move forward with his life, trying certain medications to help slow the disease down. But after his partner kicked him out of the company and locked him out of all the warehouses, Chris was forced to move back into his parents' home. Chris went from having lots of money and being independent to pretty much losing it all and having to rely on his parents. The medical era for Chris started in 2007 and ended in 2014. From 2014 to 2015, his Parkinson's would progress and get worse. Eventually in 2016, he would land a job at an online seed company where he ran the marketing and sales of the seeds online. Chris started to gain more knowledge on the genetic side of things and realized the prominence of breeding new genetics. So while he was working at the seed company, he would start the Tiger Trees brand. The true entrepreneur came out in Chris and he realized he could start his own company within the company he was working at. Chris wanted more control of the product and he realized that genetics was the best route to take and be able to exercise that control, have the ability to create flavors by his design. Chris realized that genetics gave him more control since people from many different companies would be purchasing his genetics. While Chris had started his company Tiger Trees with, within the seed company, he would end up changing the name to Compound Genetics in 2017 when he founded the company. But more on that later. While Chris was forced to start from scratch and move back into with, with his parents, Chris relentlessly worked at his craft networking with other breeders, studying new genetics, and breeding his own strains. His mom and dad actually helped him package his first seeds he had developed. Truly a family effort. In 2017, Chris would get in contact with Ivan, the legendary grower and co-founder of the Jungle Boys. Ivan and Chris connected on the internet and then met up so that they could trade each other rare OG Kush cuts. Later that year, Ivan would invite Chris to the Chalice Festival to be a seed vendor in the Jungle Boys building, where he connected with Canarado for the first time and acquired the Legend Orange Africa F2 seeds from Capulator. This changed the game for Chris, and in 2017, Compound Genetics was founded shortly after. Ivan has put a ton of people on throughout the years. Honestly, just like getting invited to Chalice changed the game for Chris, I also was put on by Ivan with him being the first cannabis entrepreneur to agree to be interviewed for this series. If you haven't watched that episode of High Design I did on Ivan and the Jungle Boys, I highly recommend you check it out. Link will be down below in the description. But big shouts out to Ivan and his group for facilitating the success of up-and-comers like Chris in 2017 and myself this year in 2021. From the origins of Compound Genetics starting in 2017, Chris was working extremely hard to develop new genetics and get his company off the ground. In 2019, Chris moved from Portland down to the Bay Area in San Francisco, which is described by Chris as a huge game changer. Whether you like it or not, California is absolutely the mecca of cannabis throughout the entire world. It's the big leagues, as we can say. Chris would network like crazy and build his amazing team, and eventually in 2019, Compound really began to start blowing up. Building the network. Chris's Parkinson's had developed, and while today he has much more of a handle on it, his speech has been affected by the disease. And while many people in his position would have given up on their dreams or at least slowed down, Chris continued to persevere and work hard at building his company, as well as continuing to network throughout the Bay Area and Cali. And don't let his speech fool you. This man is a super personable, intelligent guy 
that really understands the power of collaboration and how to pick the right people slash companies to collaborate with. Compound is defined in the dictionary as, quote, a material made up of two or more parts or elements, end quote. The collaborative model is only as as effective as the network to choose the right collabs with. Chris's ability to network even with the hardships he faces is truly inspiring and impressive. While showing people that if you're truly passionate about something, you can achieve it. Now, let's talk about the two official par partnerships that Compound Genetics is in and how they came to be. So in 2018, Burner, the founder of Cookies Cannabis, reached out to Chris and Compound Genetics about maybe working on some products for the organ market. While this would be the first time Burner and Chris would connect, nothing would come of it because Cookies wasn't quite ready to enter the organ market yet. In 2019, during the MJ Biz convention in Las Vegas, Chris gave Burner a jar of his grape gas. Nothing immediately happened, but a month later, Burner asked Chris to link up and bring some jars of his strains. Burner fell in love with the strains, and now Compound Genetics has designed 16 strains for cookies. So for any of my entrepreneurs that are watching, remember, persistence is key. I think Burner eventually saw the passion that Chris had and obviously the amazing genetics, but Chris's ability to network and stay persistent definitely helped facilitate that deal. By the way, if you haven't checked out the high design episode I did on Burner and the Cookies Cannabis Empire, I highly recommend you do. Link is down below in the description. We'll talk more about cookies in a little bit, but I first want to talk about Compound Genetics' second official partnership with Runs. So when Chris and Compound Genetics moved down to the Bay Area from Portland, he ended up befriending the head geneticist at Runs, Nick. Chris was introduced to Nick by Ray Bama, who was one of the co-founders of Runs. Nick and Chris became really good friends given that Nick's facility was only five minutes away from where Chris was living, and they bonded over their passion for cannabis and more specifically genetics. Eventually, Runtz decided they wanted to do an official partnership with Compound, so in only a couple short years, Chris had managed to make official partnerships happen with literally two of the most popular cannabis brands in the entire country. If, that's it, if that isn't impressive when it comes to networking and business expansion, then I don't know what is. Remember, persistence and passion can be powerful in striving to achieve your goals. Brand development, business strategy. While the odds in many ways were stacked against Chris, he managed to beat them and rise to a level of success most could even dream of reaching. Chris in a lot of ways has an instinctive yet accurate ability for hindsight. He sees future moves, many more moves before really anyone. Leveraging the strains and genetics into new business opportunities in a lot of ways serves as the vehicle for business expansion. Like we talked about earlier, genetics is truly a cornerstone to the overall infrastructure of cannabis. An infrastructure with immense amounts of power that, if harnessed, could be enough energy to propel a company, brand, or person to stardom and success. Flavors by Design represents Compound Genetics' pliable process or structure, in which Chris and Compound Genetics show why they truly are regarded as one of the top genetics companies in the world. Genetics companies, for the most part, are built on the collaborative business model, and this need for collaboration helps expand the footprint and control over strain menus. Chris realized back when he started Tiger Trees, the online seed company, that genetics gave him a large amount of control over companies and their menus. For example, Cookies is all over the country, in multiple states, and they utilize Compound Genetics as one of their main flavor makers. So the amount of resources that Chris and Compound Genetics utilize are minimal, yet their footprint is absolutely massive. Collaboration is a key component to the success of Compound Genetics. The other most important component to the company's success is Chris's understanding of the importance of a good team. While Compound Genetics is starting to expand its staff, the inner team is absolutely on top of their game. Like I said, Compound Genetics and Chris have been super diligent in their selection process to establish their operational infrastructure. One of the major partnerships Compound Genetics have made is with Node Labs. Node Labs has the state-of-the-art labs that allow Chris and his team to breed genetics, as well as keep a massive tissue culture and seed bank. For people that aren't aware of what a tissue culture is, 
Its word genetics are preserved and kept alive in clone form, while also having its genetics regenerated, thus ensuring quality genetics. So this partnership with Node wouldn't have been possible without Chris's close friend, mentor, and advisor, Justin, who owns DSG Labs. Again, Chris is someone who for the most part has been really effective in choosing the right people to surround himself with, and then trusting those people and taking their opinions into account. So part of my research process of the companies and individuals I cover in these high design documentaries involved me asking around the industry what they think about the company and, and individual. And when I asked around about Chris and Compound Genetics, there was one recurring point that kept being mentioned to me. And that was that Compound Genetics is leading the way into a modern era of genetics companies that can actually be profitable. I kept hearing Compound is really the first genetics company to actually have a viable genetics business model. Now, what is this modern business model? Well, to my knowledge and what I'm able to disclose is Compound supplies around 10 or so companies with unique customized packages of genetics to meet each company's individual needs. Com customized packages that help each company maximize whatever unique cultivation infrastructure that they have. The overall business model involves multiple tiers that companies can purchase. These tiers range in price depending what customized package is chosen by the company. A company or individual could purchase already produced and designed genetics or has the ability to purchase a higher tier which involves a unique design process to customize brand new genetics for that company. All of these strains, whether they are customized or not, all have amazingly strong genetics that have kept up with the tissue culture and are backed up in a seed bank. In a lot of ways, the businesses that work with Compound are helping add hype and popularity of the genetics throughout the industry. And then that hype translates into sales. But what makes a cannabis strain popular? When it comes to strains, we have seen different eras of popular strains. For example, we saw the Bubba era, the GG era, the Cookies era, the Purple Punch era, the Gelato era, the Runts era, which we're currently in right now. Now there are three main dimensions to what makes a strain popular. First dimension is the biology of the strain and what terpenes are prevalent in other cannabinoids. The second dimension is how the breeder or flavor maker interprets the flavors or the biology of the strain through different naming. Names definitely play a major part in that interpretation. And the third and maybe most important dimension is the network of people and companies that embrace the strain. There are people and companies around the industry that seem to have influence over the masses. And Burner plays a big part in this network. Cookies Fam Genetics is fascinating when we look at the effects the group has had on influencing the industry. Cookies Fam Genetics is pretty much a group of breeders and companies that work together and collaborate on products. And you know, this organization serves as the first modern example of a group with massive amounts of influence in the age of legal cannabis. While the influence that the Cookies Fam Genetics has on the industry does not look to subside anytime soon, it will be interesting to see how other breeder groups start to rise in prominence and influence in the future. We're entering a new era of genetics where individuals and certain companies and groups make strains pop off, like I said earlier. And Compound Genetics has tapped into this and has intertwined themselves. Recently, Compound Genetics has been working with Burner and Cookies Cannabis on creating flavors for individuals, like Quavo of the Migos and others. Delivering flavors by design to companies is a main focus of Chris's and Compound Genetics. But in the future, they will not look at just offering their services to just companies, but also individuals, like I said. Burner and Chris, or Cookies and Compound, have made an extremely effective team in this new trend-setting endeavor. Both individuals obviously have amazing foresight and together, I think they will usher in this new era of creating customized flavors for individuals. Typically, Burner comes to Chris with an opportunity to help him design a custom strain for someone like Quavo. Uh, for people who don't know who that is, Quavo is part of a famous rap group called the Migos. 
So Burner gives Chris an overall idea of what he's looking for, and then Chris will then start to work on bringing Burner a bunch of new flavors. And from there, they will go back and forth, trying to make sure that all of the boxes are checked off when it comes to the intended design of the flavor. Chris works more off, off on the selection side, whereas Burner works more on the branding and marketing side. Um, as you can see here, the pave that was designed for Quavo came with this super dope box design and this overall rollout from the cookie store in Santa Rosa. Overall, Burner and Chris are definitely forging a new direction for genetics and starting, to, uh, starting a trend for designing flavors specifically for rappers or who knows in the future. Burner's ability to leverage celebrity is extremely impressive and I think this is just a whole new version of Burner utilizing celebrity and having that translate into, you know, more hype and success overall. I think that the name Compound Genetics is very fitting of the company Chris and his team have built because as time goes on, they have been able to compound their reach and business relationships around the industry. Chris started with accomplishing uh, small business partnerships and then kept leveraging those accomplishments into bigger and bigger opportunities. Like I said, Compound is definitely a fitting name for the company that Chris and his small group of partners have created. The Future Chris and Compound Genetics have an extremely bright future ahead of them. A future where Chris and Compound Genetics will continue to expand while also creating new sectors of their business. Compound will be releasing a flower line next year and are looking at other product lines to potentially release in the future. One future ambition that Chris has is to establish a designer strain sector where celebrities and other prominent individuals can come to Compound to employ them to design a uni unique strain for them, like I mentioned earlier. But that's actually realizing the motto of Compound, flavors by design. Because right now, they do flavors by design for companies, they will now start to do it for individuals. Now, that isn't to say that Chris has forgotten about where he came from, and furthermore, the industry in which he loves so much. He wants to continue to supply new flavors and innovative strains from, for the industry, while also looking to invest in medical research to see how cannabis and its genetics can help people with medical conditions. When I first talked to Chris and he told me his story, I was in shock and honestly just really impressed. For someone to have brain surgery and then get diagnosed with early onset Parkinson's, then forced to move back into their parents and restart everything while keeping the fire and motivation to continue breeding genetics is really, really impressive. A testament to Chris's mental toughness as well as his love for cannabis. And overall, it's just inspiring. Chris's story is a narrative showcasing someone continuously getting knocked down, time after time, yet never staying down for good, forcing himself to get back up. And that right there, folks, is absolutely the ethos of this high design series. Never give up, keep pushing, the road is long, but it will be worth it. I think people from not just the cannabis space, but really anyone could benefit from hearing Chris's story. While life's hardships can compound on you, so can the experiences you gain from overcoming those hardships. Similar to the whole saying, give a man power and he will reveal his true self. How about put someone through a series of hardships and they will reveal their true self. How about that? Overcoming the many obstacles Chris had to go through and still goes through to this day, it didn't build Chris's character, it revealed it. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the High Design Documentary Series. In this series, we're going to cover the cannabis industry's greatest minds. Like, share, and comment down below. Who should we cover next? And make sure to follow us on social media. And remember, don't ever give up. Keep pushing. If you really have a passion, give it your all. Anyways, this is LMC, signing out.
tired Yeah, I'm so high now Wanna go Yeah, high design in the flow Yeah, roll it all out Hey, I'm trying to think about the most